Do you believe that the Nephilim of the Book of Enoch, the Archons of the Nag Hammadi, and the Anunnaki of Sumerian legend are all of the same? Yes, I fully believe that they're all fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I do. I try to explain that when Daniel saw a watcher and a holy one, he specifically separated. He said a watcher and a holy one mm -hmm. came down. When Christ was born, he was called a holy thing. So he was not considered a watcher. Mm -hmm. He was not considered a holy one. It's the only time the Bible uses it, mm -hmm. holy thing. Mm -hmm. So he was different in what these two were. So... The Watcher and the Holy One, I believe the Watcher is the fallen angel. Right. The ones that came upon the, the daughters of mankind. The mm -hmm. Holy One is the angels of God. Mm -hmm. That explains why we have mythology about the 12 gods and goddesses throughout the globe, uh, as known as the men of renown. Yes, I do think that. I think that when uh, you have a hybrid breed that apparently occurred from a fallen angel, that those things, whatever they were, mm -hmm. were quite unusual, quite great, and quite uh, more powerful than you would say just your typical human. And I think that's why Cain felt he was better than Abel. Right, right. right. That he had that little bit more of whatever mm -hmm. spiritual being mm -hmm. or, or whatever that he felt he was better mm -hmm. than Abel, and so he didn't have to do. He was more equal to God, so why did he have to give to God? Right, right, right. So I do think that you'll find in my book, I try to explain to you that the difference between the three that I just told you and how those watchers actually continue to have that relationship with the women. And, and, we, and from that point, I show you how it goes into um, the demonic thing where they'll talk about, especially witches, where they've had relationships with demons right. and those kinds of things. It's still playing on that right into the alien abduction scenario. All those things have total correlations from the Garden of Eden. Right, and Genesis 6, 1 through 5. Exactly. Yeah, the alien abduction phenomenon. Which actually brings me to the next question. Um, do you believe, as it says in Genesis 6, 1 through 5, that the sons of God did indeed intermarry with the daughters of man? And if so, do you think this explains the alien abduction phenomena on yes. the planet? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's just been used, different names have been used. We've gone through, you know, the Nephilim and, and the Watchers, and then we've gone through the, the demonic activity and the demons, and then we went to the fairies and the gentlings, right. and now we're into the aliens. Right. But when you go back and do the research on all those, these creatures or these beings are all, all the same. same. Exactly. And if you um, do a lot of research like I have in what they call the DMT, um, which is a type of um, plant derivative that you can take that will cause spiritual events it affects the pineal gland like we were talking about earlier and this doctor actually had some subjects he did every one of those subjects came back drawing pictures of those gray aliens mm -hmm. so you know we talk about that going back to the fairies and what they looked like back to the demons right, right on back right do you believe that the nephilim are still here and as revelation says will be released again upon the world I think we're already seeing that. I think we're seeing that with alien abductions mm -hmm. yes. because that is getting very prevalent and my research in that area is it, it, that area is growing and growing and growing that people are having experiences that they do not understand. They're scared to death. And the interesting thing is uh, Ann Druffle did some work in this where people were being abducted and that, the only thing that will stop an abduction while it's happening is the name of Jesus. Jesus. So that tells you the name of Jesus, it is stopped, it's the only thing that will stop it. It's the only thing that would cause a demon to leave back in the days when he walked this earth. Right. Right. It reminds me of a story in, um, I believe it's the first book of Adam and Eve, where Adam is inside the cave of treasures, and Satan is outside as an angel of light. And um, instead of Adam going out and confronting Satan outside of the cave of treasures, he sits down and he prays, and at that time, Satan has to flee because he's calling uh, calling Jesus to find out if this is truly an angel of light. And it says in that particular chapter that um, the demons and Satan, they cannot stay in a place of prayer right. when the name of Jesus has been in, in 
people. That's right. If you see people who have had near-death experiences, and let's say that their near-death near experience is not a pleasant one, the ones that have come back have said that the last little light that they saw before these terrible beings took them where they felt were, were going to hell, that they screamed out one thing, and that was Jesus' name, and when they did it, the light came back, and they were back in their bodies. So I'm t there's no doubt in our mind. Mm -hmm. We have a choice. We can either choose Satan exactly. or we can choose Jesus. Jesus. But the only way we're going to make it into eternal life with the creator of this whole thing right. is the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Do you feel that the releasing of the fallen angels has anything to do with the great deception spoken of in the Bible? Yes, I do believe it is. Um, and some people say, well, you know, if he, if, if God was all-knowing, why did he let these things happen? You know, of course, I have not the mind of God, but mm -hmm. there was a purpose for all things. And since there were spiritual beings, we, we are human, so we do not understand the spiritual being. Mm -hmm. But even though we don't understand it, they do exist. Right. And we do know that in Genesis, he had nine stones. Mm -hmm. So he, he was greater than what humanity was, right. but he was less than what God was. Mm -hmm. So there's a step between us and being at the, the level of what God is. Right. And that is why we don't realize that in our lives when things just happen and we think, oh, this was terrible, that was terrible, that that spiritual realm is actually trying to make us get concerned. And what usually happens is we blame God. Why did this happen? Right, right, right. Because once he, it's kind of like if I know your Achilles heel and I know your thoughts, then I can be ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. And Satan has got that capability. Mm -hmm. He's power over the air. Right. He knows you more than you know yourself sometimes. Right. <laughs> and that can be a little scary for people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the great deception, uh, that soon the whole world will realize this extra presence, this alien presence upon the planet? That uh, soon the whole world will, will be exposed to the fact that there is something here. I think that probably for that to occur, that that is probably where it talks about if we were not sealed, mm -hmm. that the whole world would be deceived. Mm -hmm. Because we are right Even now seeing are. where truth and uh, false are so close that some things seem that once were false seem true and truth seems false, you cannot distinguish the lie. Mm -hmm. Once that happens and you do not have the free will to distinguish between what's truth, Satan's got you. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's why it says that the time is not cut short, even the elect would be lost. Right, right. And I think and we're close to no that. We're seeing left. we're seeing that now. I mean we're seeing things where like I was saying earlier about uh, the Da Vinci Code. Right. People are like questioning their faith. Right. Are they, right. Or they read the Left Behind series and they think that for some strange reason that if they get left behind that they can keep from getting the mark of the beast and fight the Antichrist. Right, and I'm right, like, right, right. give me a break. You can't win against Satan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, this man's, or this being's been around since the beginning of time and exactly. you've been here, what, a couple of, you know, 50, right. 60, 70 right, right. years. Mm -hmm. You can't win against that. You can't play the game of spirituality because right. we are not spiritual right. beings. And Isaiah... 14 shows perfectly who it is that is aligned against the world. That's right. Do you believe that the Antichrist will be from the bloodline of the Nephilim or that somehow it's being set up that the Antichrist will come from the bloodline of the Merovingians? Well, the Merovingian bloodline is what they're going to try to use to prove that he... Um, he is the true Messiah mm -hmm. because we know that when that temple is built in Jerusalem that the true Messiah to be able to step into that priesthood that was from the divinic bloodline mm -hmm. that he's got to be able to prove he's from that bloodline right. and they have tried their very best to make sure those royal bloods run, bloodlines <laughs> run specifically in that area so that there will not be a question but because my research takes it a little bit further to ensure that it happens is that I believe the blood from the Shroud of Turin right. was cloned mm -hmm. and that the Vatican has kept it very, very, very well perfected and, and, and taken mm -hmm. care of all these years to be able to be the false prophet so that when the person that walks in there and says he is 
from the Merovingian bloodline, mm -hmm. and uh, tries to say he's from the lineage of David. Right. That there may be a question, but when his blood matches that on that shroud, right. He will be the icon that John the Revelator said. He used the word in the Greek in Revelation. He used the word icon. He didn't use character or mm -hmm. art, but an icon is in the image of a very famous person. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, you know, when the Catholics see the visions of Mary or if Jesus, their statue starts bleeding, mm -hmm. you know, they immediately go to it. If they believe that he could live again, they'll be flocking to him. Absolutely. And the Catholic Church is trying very desperately to bring all religions together exactly. will be there going, and we have this to prove it. Right.